Good evening and welcome to this little evening prayer on Thursday. It's the 27th of May and uh, I'm going to read Psalm 138 for us in a moment, uh, which is appointed for this evening. But um, just as we begin, let me read verse five and six. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. And that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And so we just uh, briefly pause for a moment as we reflect on today and commit all that we've done to the Lord. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So let me read Psalm 138 for us, Psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things, your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear your words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfil his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures for ever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Well, I wonder how you would describe the glory of God if you had to do that. Uh, how would you describe the glory of God? I guess uh, as a shorthand, we might say, well, God's glory is all of the greatness that makes him worthy of praise, worthy of the kind of praise that well, it encompasses all of us. As we see here, David says, I praise you with all my heart uh, or the kind of praise that um, that exceeds the praise that we might give to any other thing or any other one. Uh, and indeed, the praise that the kind of praise that is exclusive and when we think of God's glory, we think he deserves all the praise. Well, we get that kind of sense, don't we, from this opening song of praise from David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart, he says, before the gods, I will sing uh, your praise. And verse two, I will bow down towards your holy temple. I will praise your name for your love and for your faithfulness. And as David goes on, he then invites and, well, in fact, issues a, a command that all the kings of the earth would join him in praising this God, giving uh, exclusive uh, praise to this God. And he tells us why. He tells us uh, because uh, of God's glory. That's why the king should praise him. Verse five, may they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great, he says. But I think it still begs the question, doesn't it? What is this great glory uh, of God's? Well, there are two words here that David uses that, that I think link us back perhaps to the most central and significant description of, of God and his character and his glory. So David says that he is, God is worthy of praise in verse two for his uh, love and for his faithfulness. And those two ideas, those two very words, in fact, love and faithfulness, they're ideas and words that uh, that are um, uh, there in God's own description of himself in the famous verses from uh, Exodus 34, verse six. I'll read them for us. The Lord, the Lord. This is God speaking. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Uh, verses that get picked up again and again and repeated through scripture like we see in Psalm 138, love and faithfulness 
being picked up as reasons for God being praised. And perhaps you can picture the scene with uh, Moses saying to God, uh, please show me your glory. And Moses is put in the in the rock, isn't he, in the cleft of the rock. Uh, and uh, God responds to Moses' question by saying, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. It's striking, isn't it? I don't know uh, what you think of when I ask you to describe glory. Perhaps we, we think um, first and foremost, most naturally, of greatness. Greatness in the sense of raw power and might. And God obviously is powerful and he is mighty and he's great in that sense. But as God causes his greatness and his glory to pass by Moses, it is seen in goodness. God says, I will cause all my goodness to pass by. His mercy, his compassion, his grace, the fact that he's slow to anger and that he abounds in steadfast love. And we see that, don't we, here in Psalm 138, as David pours forth this song of praise for God and for God's great glory. Well, he then goes on to remind us um, uh, of the graciousness of this uh, and the goodness of this uh, God who is uh, highly exalted. He looks upon the lowly, David says in verse six. And so as we contemplate God's glory and God's own revelation of his own character, he won't let us imagine for a moment that he is far off, that he is aloof, that he is powerful and mighty, but disinterested in us. No, he says, the Lord who is on high looks upon the lowly. And I hope like with David here, I hope that that uh, surprises us into a fresh sense of wonder and praise and awe for this God, that just when we might expect his glory to be, or to be his thundering justice and judgment, uh, and to, uh, for the bent of his heart uh, to be retribution for wickedness. Actually, what we find that his glory is his goodness, and the bent of his heart is compassion and mercy and graciousness and abounding steadfast love. So can I pray for us that along with David here in Psalm 138, we might be led into fresh uh, wonder and praise and adoration uh, for the character, the kindness, the gracious and goodness of our God, who is great in glory because he is great in goodness. So let me leave us in a prayer. Let's pray. Our Father God, along with David, we ask for your help that we might praise you, O Lord, with all of our heart. We ask that you'd help us to praise you above all else, to praise your name first and foremost. And we thank you, Lord God, that in your greatness, though you are high and lofty and far above us, we pray uh, that you, we praise you that you look upon the lowly. And so we ask that you'd help us to humble ourselves before you. We ask that you would hear us when we call upon you, and we ask this, Lord God, not because we deserve to have you look upon us, but because through Jesus you have fulfilled your promise to stretch out your hand against your enemies and to save us. And we praise you, Father God, that your love endures forever and you demonstrated that love chiefly in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let me pray the collect for this evening. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so let me lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we conclude with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night to you and uh, God bless.